Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So I am here checking out the e-commuter. It is a new bike from a company called Batch Bicycles. It's actually their first foray into electric bikes. It's straight up a commuter. So I'd love to tell you all about the little details. Let's go ahead and jump in. So one thing I like about the Batch uh, e-commuter is that it is a down-to-business commuter. <laughs> so it uh, has all the necessary features for a commuter bike, um, but it doesn't have a whole lot else going on after that. And a large part of that is to keep the price point down. Uh, so let's just go ahead and start there. This bike is actually priced at $19.99, so it's about $2,000. And you can get it from a local uh, retailer. Uh, so Batch Bicycles is the brand uh, of bicycle that goes through local brick and mortar stores. Uh, so this isn't available for online purchase or from a third party like Amazon. It's actually a bike that you can get at a local shop. Uh, so I actually picked this one up at a local shop. Uh, it was done there for the assembly and everything. Of course, the bike was sent to me for review, but they sent it to the bike shop uh, local in the area. So it's actually called Jerk's Bike Shop. They're nice guys, <laughs> trust me. Um, but yeah, uh, and that's a big part of the value for this bike is that it's a not terribly expensive bike for the equipment that you get, especially the electric system. Uh, and it's a great commuter, but it does go through a local shop, meaning that you'll have a place, you know, a center point for service work or warranty work if you need it. Uh, so that's actually a pretty good part of the value proposition for this bicycle. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into the bike and tell you why it would be a good e-commuter. We'll go ahead and start up at the front with the tires. So these are actually uh, Kenda Quick tires. So they have a pretty good tread on them uh, for road riding, uh, but they're actually kind of wide. So they actually do have a little bit of cushion to them as you ride. These are a 27.5 uh, diameter. Uh, for the tires. So that's actually a size that's coming into its own as far as the commuter realm is concerned. And the width on them is 1.75, so it's not quite two inches wide, a little bit shy of that, but it still has plenty of, of space for traction as well as comfort, like I mentioned. Uh, it does have a Presta valve on there. That is one thing that personally I kind of like commuter bikes to have a Schrader valve, a more standard American valve as it's called sometimes. The reason for that, you can actually fill up with air at a gas station nearby <laughs> without having to bring a pump with you. So that's one, you know, minor convenience aspect that I kind of like. But anyways, moving on. Uh, so it does have a double walled rim uh, with 32 spokes on it. These are actually a 14 gauge spoke. So they're kind of a smaller spoke, but that's fine because this isn't a cargo bike. And it's actually not terribly heavy. Uh, I weighed the bike in total and the total weight of the bicycle was about 47 pounds barely shy of 47 pounds as you see it with the battery the fenders the rack and you know all the bells and whistles that it has on it and this is actually the large size bike this bike is a larger size so keep that in mind when you're looking at some of the measurements and things on the internet that um, this is the large size that I measured it's actually made for myself because I myself, I'm six feet tall and my legs use a 34 inch uh, inseam for my pants. So I kind of got long, long legs, good for kickboxing, I suppose. But so keep that in mind, this bike, the way it is, the larger size, 47 pounds, that's pretty lightweight for everything that you get on here. Uh, so that's why they can get away with using a smaller gauge spoke. So it works pretty well. 100 millimeter hub spacing right here in the front. Do have a quick release uh, for getting the front wheel on and off as well as the back wheel. And let's just go ahead and jump into the brakes. Uh, so these actually use a really nice brake system. This is a Tektro hydraulic disc brake, and it actually has a 180 millimeter rotor on the front. So that's a pretty good size rotor um, for this disc. And you have a same set on the back. Sometimes you see a bigger one in the front, smaller one in the back. There's a good reason for that. But in this case, you actually have stopping power on both sides that are mirrored, that are equal. So yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. I'm actually a little jealous of these brakes. I wish I had them on my own personal bike. Uh, so coming up to the fork, uh, this is a rigid aluminum fork. It's not steel. I got a magnet out and I tested it. <laughs> so this is an aluminum fork uh, that, again, keeps the weight down. You have a tapered headset that goes from an inch to an inch and an eighth sealed cartridge bearings in there. Um, the mount for the fork also, or the fork also has an attachment point for the fender, as you can see, as well as this little spot here that perhaps could accommodate a, rag, a bag, I'm sorry, <laughs> a rack or a bag. Uh, I don't know of one that fits. I don't use front racks myself, but I, that's what this little spot is for. If you saw two of them there, you might be able to get a water bottle there if you really wanted to lean forward and pick out a water bottle. But Batch Bicycles actually has you covered because they got water bottle 
mounting provisions right here on the seat post tube, which are cool. Special brownie points from electricbikereview.com for the bottle cage bosses. <laughs> so I think we covered everything uh, down here. Let's go ahead and start moving up to the controls on the bike. Uh, they're pretty streamlined. You know, you got a lot of space to deal with if you want some added accessories on here. Um, but aside from that, it's pretty clean. It keeps the cockpit nice and streamlined. I like it a lot. Everything's all nice and black except for the screen itself. Helps it pop out. So it's, you know, down to business. I like that a lot. So um, the brakes, the lever is up here, kind of like a two finger lever, I would call it. You can kind of squeeze a third one on there if you wanted to, but I'd call it a two finger lever. And of course, this is a reservoir for the uh, mineral oils for the stopping power. So good stuff there. This bike does not have a motor inhibitor. That's a feature you usually see with a hub drive bike, but in this case, you're using a Bosch mid drive, which is a pedal assist class one electric bike. So a motor inhibitor is not nearly as needed especially if you got a throttle. So if you got a throttle and a hub drive, then yeah, those are really nice to have. But in this case, neither applies. So these are a perfectly good set of brakes. The handlebars do have a minimal rise to them, just a little bit, maybe like 35 millimeters or so, and a tiny bit of back sweep, just a little bit. So it kind of comes back to you a tiny bit. The handlebars are a good width. They're not wide. I wouldn't call them wide, but I wouldn't call them narrow. Sometimes you see them chopped in a little bit for kind of like that, uh, you know, maybe ultra aggressive, premium rush <laughs> kind of riding. Uh, but in this case, I like the width. Uh, they're a perfectly good size to go through daily commuting. The grips on this are just kind of a flat rubber with a locking ring on them right here. The locking ring is nice because it keeps it in one spot so you don't have to worry about it twisting. However, they're not terribly comfortable. You know, <laughs> let's just cut the mustard. Uh, these, these grips are pretty, you know, pretty stiff, uh, I would say. Um, but you know, that's you know, part of the point of getting the price point down something that's easily customizable If you wanted to change it up with the local shop that you get the bike from in the first place. So uh, The stem right here uh, has a little bit about 70 millimeters worth of, of reach to it um, You can get something adjustable if you wanted to this is a pretty good size. I think it's a 27 if I remember right uh, for the clamp diameter uh, You can check out the full specifications at electricbikereview.com where we busted out the measuring tape and measured every little bit on this bike <laughs> So you can verify there uh, The frame actually has a pretty high step to it. You know that keeps the that keeps the rigidity high for you know Good good commuting and everything uh, But yeah, you got to get your foot over this spot, which is you know pretty high uh, in this case It's a large size. So it's slightly taller uh, but nonetheless, if you get a, a medium size or even a smaller size, that's going to change it, you know, not even an inch. So uh, keep that in mind. If you're looking for something that's easier to get into, something more approachable, might want to consider another bike. Because um, this one definitely has the high step to it. <laughs> There's no bones about it. Uh, so uh, the seat is actually another point, kind of like the grips, where it's not really that comfortable. This is what I would describe as an active seat, you know, kind of has a slim uh, footprint to it, which is really good for pedaling. I do like that. However, there's not a whole lot of gel in here, so it's not terribly comfortable, I would say. Again, this is something that you can easily customize. Pretty much any seat will fit onto that seat post tube, but the seat post, or sorry, the seat post here, and this is the tube, the part of the frame. The seat post itself, a 30.9 diameter, by the way, you can customize this if you wanted to as well, get a suspension seat post on there to kind of give it a little bit, uh, to kind of take the edge off, you know, make commuting a little bit easier to commit to because it's more soft in sensitive areas. So as it stands, this is the most rigid it can get with a seat that doesn't have too much gel and a solid seat post. Uh, but you can, again, customize that. That's easy stuff. Bike shop can totally help you with that. Um, so moving on to the back of the bike, uh, this is a pretty good rack that comes with it. I do like this rack for a couple of good reasons. Number one, I personally, uh, this is just my personal preference, it's not really a thing, but I like the racks that bolt onto the frame for the simple reason that they can be replaced or fixed. Some racks mount onto the frame itself and are welded in, and those are great. Don't get me wrong, I, I very rarely ever see them break. But this, you know, that infinitesimally small chance <laughs> leads me to want something that I could fix and take on and off. Um, you could also switch it out for a different kind if you wanted to, but this one is nice because it has the railing. It has the rails that are specific size to fit just about any kind of pannier that you can clip in there. These aren't too big. A lot of times you see some that are a little bit bulkier and they can't fit every kind of pannier bag. But when you have a smaller tubing like this, it can fit just about anything. And it also has the rail on this spot as well as a hook point here and also on the bottom end in case you have different sizes or heights of a bag to fit on there. So that's a pretty cool thing uh, about it. 
You do have one of these clips which come in handy in strange occurrences. It, pull, it happens every now and again when you want to carry something like a glove or a small box or maybe a bag of donuts or something like that. This could totally do it. Um, also a set of fenders, uh, very similar to the front. Actually, I don't think I covered the fenders uh, when I was on the front, but this is a good time. So these are a plastic fender uh, that do mount on the front and the back, uh, very similarly with also this little mud flap on the back. Plastic fenders are nice because they keep the cost down and they also keep the weight down of the total vehicle. You do have to adjust them every now and again. Sometimes they get bumped out of the way and they start grinding against the tread. If you're throwing the bike around, say in your garage or something like that, or if you kick it or if a child kicks it or something, they can kind of get out of whack. So you got to kind of push them back a little bit, kind of adjust them a tiny bit. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those nitpicky things that, uh, that comes up every now and again, uh, but it's not all that common. And if you have a fairly regular routine, you know, you go to work, you put this thing in the same place, take it home, put it in the garage in the same spot, probably not going to happen all that often, you know, once you get your routine down. Uh, so the back wheel is more or less mirrored from the front, with the exception of the gearing. But before we jump to the other side, I do want to mention the kickstand mount. So this is actually a 40 millimeter provision for uh, a rear mounted kickstand, which you get special uh, points from electricbikereview.com <laughs> because uh, these, uh, the kickstand mount being mounted in the rear avoids uh, coming into contact with the crank when the bicycle is pushed backwards. So this is the crank right here in the pedal. Uh, so you see when you, let me adjust the uh, front here. All right, there we go. When you push the bike backwards, the crank starts moving and sometimes you can get the crank to go back and then it locks into position against a, uh, a kickstand mounted in the center. Uh, and then the bike kind of seizes up and you got to push it forward. It's not really a big thing, but every now and again, it can seem a little bit intimidating. Uh, so up in the front, you actually have a 38 tooth uh, chain ring. This is actually specific, uh, specifically made for the Bosch active line motor uh, that's right here in the middle of the bike. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this is a specific setup, so it's tuned pretty well for that purpose. And that, of course, comes into the rear. Uh, this cassette is an 11 to 32 tooth uh, cassette in the back using a Shimano Altus derailleur. So I like the Altus. It's one I have on my personal bike, and I like it a lot. It's come a long way. Um, so this one is actually actuated by, kind of jumped around a little bit, by the trigger shifter up here. Um, so this is good. It has like a paddle on the lower end if you want to switch, but also a trigger down here on the bottom if you want to get up to a higher gear. This index is pretty well. It's nice and tight. I like it a lot. You also have a windowed gear indicator, uh, so that's a special thing. Uh, so that's about it on the mechanical system. There's actually only one thing that I left out, and I kind of put it off a little bit. <laughs> so uh, the cranks on this one are 175 millimeters, and that's to accommodate the larger size of frame. So if you get a medium size, that's likely going to be a 170 excuse me, 170 millimeter crank. Um, but uh, one thing I did want to mention was the pedals. So these pedals actually came from uh, the bike shop that I picked up the bike at from Jerk's Bike Shop. Uh, the bicycle either lost the pedals in shipping or perhaps it was misplaced during the assembly process. So I actually don't know what pedals come on this bike by default. But this is actually one cool thing about the fact that it does ship to a local bike shop is that they had pedals hanging around. It's a bike shop after all. So they put these on here for the sake of the review so I could continue on with it. Um, and in the meantime, they're trying to locate those other ones. So, uh, but these are a plastic pedal and I believe that's what's on the batch bicycles in the first place based on the pictures that I can see on from what I've been given from the company. Uh, this is the only one I've seen, <laughs> the only actual physical bike I've seen in person. So. Um, I believe they're plastic pedals and that would actually kind of make sense with the uh, value proposition that you have going on with the bike. There's other small things that they've done to kind of keep the cost low. You know, the seat can't be terribly expensive. These grips are fairly basic. It would make sense that the pedals are also kind of simple, but all of these touch points, like I said, are something that you can customize with the bike shop. So that's actually a pretty, you know, pretty interesting way to look at it. So let's go ahead and jump into the electrical specifications on the bike. This one is using the Bosch active line which is a pretty cool motor so let me show you that it's actually a, what is called the generation three of the bosch system um they're actually coming out with more stuff uh the new performance line is going to act actually use this same system uh, if you want to check out more we actually did a video uh about the new bosch uh, motor systems coming out in 2020 you can check that out at electric bike uh, review uh, for our youtube channel and also on the forums on our website but anyways um, so the Bosch Active Line is actually a really cool system because it keeps the cost down pretty low. 
Uh, so this one is a fairly small unit. It doesn't take up as much space as its predecessor, the Generation 2, or the what's now called the old performance line. <laughs> so it's kind of smaller, and as a result, it doesn't have a terribly high amount of torque. Um, so this one's using a little bit less torque. It's using a larger size chain ring to kind of compensate for that. Uh, and as a result, this one goes about, I'd say, 18 and a half miles an hour is where I had a comfortable cruising speed. It is set for a maximum speed of 20 miles an hour. So perhaps if you are a little more <laughs> uh, athletic than I am, or you might be able to get it up to a little bit higher. Um, but for me, usually when I'm pedaling on the flat, about comfortable, 18 and a half is about where I wind up cruising uh, for the Bosch Active Line. Uh, it's one really cool thing about it is it's almost silent. I mean, it's really, really quiet, this motor. And that's one thing I especially like uh, for commuting. Uh, when you're on a nice little trail like this one, I don't know if you've seen some of the surroundings. There's like a nice wooden bridge over here, a paved trail. It's pretty serene around the area, nice and quiet. So having a really loud motor system, like on a hub drive, I've done that before around here. And it kind of takes away from some of the serenity of the experience, some of the psych, some of the benefits that you get from cycling and being active. The battery is using uh, kind of like the, what I guess you could call the old standard of the Bosch Power Pack 400. That's a 400 watt hour battery. It's a 36 volt, 11 amp hour battery that comes in just shy of 400 on the watt hour side, if you do the math. Uh, but this system, uh, this battery pack uh, is quite prevalent. You see it all the time from the Bosch systems. It's very, um, very, uh, what's the word, uh, available. You could probably get a pack like this from a lot of local retailers who've carried Bosch for years. And speaking of, I remember a time when the cheapest Bosch bike you could get was about $4,000. So, uh, you know, those days are, are past us now. Uh, they've done a lot to help keep the cost down for stuff. So uh, one of them is actually the Purion display. Uh, so this is the Purion display. We'll turn it on by pressing the power button up there. And it'll boot up and just show you a couple of things. So again, it's really streamlined. It shows you just the basics here. It's one way to keep the cost down. And, you know, truth be told, I there's a lot of displays that show you a ton of details. And I like the streamlined ones. I like the small ones personally because, you know, it helps me focus on the ride and have some fun. But um, this is definitely one that kind of goes to that aesthetic. You know, something Purion, something, I guess, pure you know, distilled perhaps, I don't know. Anyways, after pressing the power button, it shows you how fast you're going, uh, shows you your battery life right here and the pedal assist level. Right now, pedal assist is off. By pressing the plus button, I go into Eco, Tour, Sport, and Turbo. That's pretty much giving you more power as you scale up, as you pedal. So when you pedal the bike, it's using a really advanced pedal assist system that measures cadence, uh, how fast you're pedaling. It measures torque, how much tension you're putting onto the pedals. It also measures the wheel speed, how fast the wheel itself is moving. And using those sensors, it's actually a really intuitive experience as you're pedaling. It feels like you've got bionic legs. Uh, so this in turbo mode is throwing out all the power as you pedal, and you can scale that back down if you want to take the ride a little bit easier. Um, this display, and that's mostly it. That's mostly what you're going to be doing on the bike from the get-go. How fast, pedal assist, battery. Boom, there you go. There is a walk assist feature um, on some of the Bosch powered bikes, uh, but on this one, you'd actually have to, let's see, get it moving a little bit. Sometimes they turn it on, sometimes they turn it off. Um, you'll have to actually take the bike to a local retailer and see if that feature can be added to the bicycle. Because uh, when it comes from the factory, uh, it comes with a certain set of software uh, that's kind of like the default. But you can actually take this to a local shop, have them plug it in, put it into their uh, special software that they have access to. And they can actually change a couple of things. And that's one of them, is whether the walk assist is active or usable or not. Um, another couple of things, if you want to check the trip set or if you want to reset things, you press and hold the plus and minus buttons. Or no, sorry. <laughs> you press and hold the plus button. Uh, when you do that, that will actually turn the lights on if there were lights on this bike. But unfortunately, there are no lights on this bike. So that's one thing I did want to talk about as kind of a con, is that the bike doesn't have an integrated set of lights on it. Uh, so sometimes you'll see a rack that has like a light that's attached here and a little wire that's coming up through and perhaps down into the motor and likewise with the front. And they actually can use the main battery pack and be wired in to just press the plus button on there and then that'll turn the lights on. In this case, the display doesn't show that because it's not an option on this bike. It doesn't have a set of lights on it. Uh, so that's one thing that actually, I guess I would say this is definitely a commuter bike in a lot of ways. However, it's not commuter ready for that one tiny thing. <laughs> so if you've got a set of lights for a bike that strap onto the handlebars or strap onto the seat post, 
you could just go ahead and use those because that'll work just great. All right, so we talked about the mechanical system and the electric system in good detail. Let's go ahead and jump on the bike and take it for a ride. So here we are on the Batch e-commuter. You can see it's actually pretty stable. Um, I kind of talked a little bit about the wideness of the tires, the 1.75, and the fact that it's a pretty, uh, what's the word, like comfortable commuter in the sense that it's very um, familiar, I'll put it that way. Comfort's not really the word I want to use. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but it's very familiar. It's a commuter e-bike through and through. That Bosch Active Line system is really intuitive. Uh, I like it a lot with a lot of the professional mid-drive systems. They feel so much like a bicycle that it's, it's really a totally different experience. I've done a lot of electric bikes with hub drives, with throttles, with cadence sensors, with you know every sort of mix. But the most the professional ones, the Bosch, Shimano, Yamaha, Broza, the Fazua, like those ones feel really good. They each have their own little subtleties, but by and large, they feel like a bicycle. They don't feel like a moped. They don't feel like a, a dirt bike or something like that, the way the other ones kind of do, uh, depending on the bottle. But anyways, I'm aside for myself, the e-commuter is not comfortable. <laughs> you know, and I'll just, I'll say that from the get-go. From stock, I would not call it a comfort bike, and that's okay because it's a commuter, it's like a price point commuter with, you know, the important stuff is there. The nice motor is there, you know, the frame is set up for the fenders, the lights, and the rack. If you get lights, the fenders and the rack are cool because, you know, those are things that some, you know, they're harder to get on a bicycle. You, sometimes if you order them online, it won't be the right size, it won't be the right shape. So they got that stuff down. The lights would have been nice, but you know, I, I understand, keeping the price point down. The grips, I would definitely want to customize those. Just about any grips will fit, by the way. Um, there's not a whole lot of variance in those. Um, the seat, yeah, it's not my most favorite seat, but you know, that's, that's some of the trade-offs. That's some of the things that you get or don't get depending on the bike that, you, that you're after. So it's a good thing you're watching Electric Bike Review. <laughs> that way you can, you can hear some of this stuff firsthand. Uh, so yeah. Let me go ahead and switch the bike, or sorry, switch the camera to show you a little bit more of the bike, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, I've got you pointed down at the pedals here, uh, as well as the Bosch Active Line motor. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and take it for a spin. I got it cranked up to level turbo, so let's go ahead and make it fly. Okay, that was fun. We got to go over a couple of bridges, got to go a little uphill, a little bit of downhill. So hopefully that gives you a little bit to latch onto when you're uh, watching the vid. So cool stuff. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the Batch Bicycles e-commuter with me. It's actually a really, you know, like I said, down to business commuter, and that's exactly up my personal alley. I, I think it's a, it's a good thing for that. I definitely would customize it if it were my own. I have a lot of that stuff hanging around already, so for me, it kind of works. If you're getting into cycling for the first time, expect to want to customize it after you take it for a spin. Uh, but yeah, your local shop that you pick up the bike from in the first place can help you out with that. So anyways, if you want to check out the full review for the e-commuter, go to electricbikereview.com. Uh, there's a link in the description below. While you're there, you can actually check out the full measurements, specifications, you know, almost down to the nut and bolts for uh, this bicycle as many as well as many other electric bikes that we've done over the years, about a thousand by now. Uh, while you're there, you can also participate in the forums if you'd like to be active in the community and ask a question and pitch us for another review. So thanks for watching guys, ride safe.